first, uh, very first introduction. Um, so I'm uh, Roman as part of the UN uh, coordination team organizing this uh, this also webinar today. I'm here together with uh, my colleagues Tania. Uh, she will be ensuring moderation during the during the whole webinar, and also with my colleague Sofia, and she's in the background ensuring the technicals and that uh, this whole webinar runs uh, smoothly. So a few words uh, to start with on Impact Ed Tech. What is uh, Impact Ed Tech? Um, we are um, an European incubator accelerators for startup and SMEs that is co-founded uh, by the European Commission. We're run uh, by a consortium of three partners with complementary expertise. So um, European Schoolnet, a network of 32 European ministries of education, together with ISDI, uh, the worldwide leader in digital education, um, as well as a funding box and EU experts in funding opportunities and knowledge. Um, we're currently supporting 43 European digital innovation innovators via uh, so two open calls that are currently running. So the first open call uh, is still ongoing. The second open call, uh, also known as a remote calling open call and uh, Bolster Academy is, uh, is one of the um, startups from this second open call. And uh, just to let you know that we also have a third open call, uh, which has just opened. Uh, applications are opened and uh, there are only 63 days to apply to this uh, third open call. Uh, our goals at IMPACT are uh, to enhance learning experiences, uh, foster also personalized and inclusive educational models, um, also uh, opening a whole new area of uh, human-centered digital education, amongst many others. Um, so the, the remote schooling open call uh, is was designed um, to target EdTech solution that address uh, the challenges faced uh, by schools during the COVID-19 crisis and uh, was aimed to provide uh, innovative solutions addressing different aspects of remote teaching and learning. And there were 147 startups eligible and only them uh, were selected as the most promising solution that addressed the specific challenges that were faced by schools uh, and also learners. And um, these 10 startups were fast tracked into a five month acceleration program. And uh, together, uh, today's uh, webinar is uh, will focus on one of the startup bolster, and uh, they will present us their results from this whole acceleration program, as well as the piloting phase and uh, what they have achieved. Um, what makes us at IMPACT uh, unique uh, here is, um, so for the startups get access to equity-free financial support, um, as well as business and educational men thorough mentoring, and also um, the chance and opportunity to pilot in real educational settings for teachers in school uh, that took part uh, in this uh, in this program. Um, they have access to the most innovative uh, educational technologies, and they also get to uh, support these uh, innovators, these startups, uh, in improving their solution. So thanks to to the feedback. Uh, that they provide and uh, with the final aim to uh, for the startups to achieve a tech excellency. If you want uh, to know more, to follow us uh, on our social medias, uh, feel free to connect uh, on our website or um, on our Twitter account or to get in touch uh, with me directly by, uh, by email should you wish to have more information. I thank you very much uh, for listening to this very short intro. And uh, I will now let the, uh, let the floor to my colleague Tania to, uh, to get started with the Bolster webinar. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roman, for this uh, introduction. And thank you very much to everyone for, for being here today with us. I hope you're ready. I hope you all have your your coffees. It's really nice to see so many familiar faces, uh, uh, the piloting teachers, the startups, and also the educational mentors. And as uh, Roman said, we have today the Boston Academy webinar starting right now. We're going to have with us Mark uh, as representative of the startup, Rafa as a representative of the piloting teachers, and Chiara, 
and uh, the three of them are going to tell us a bit about the results of what they uh, what they have experienced uh, um, in this piloting phase of the impact at the program. Uh, Chiara, as a, sorry, as a representative of the piloting teachers and Rafa as educational mentor. So I'm going to give the floor to Mark. Uh, just a, a brief uh, advice, like Mark, you have like around 10 minutes. Uh, to share your screen, uh, tell us about your presentation a bit and, and, and your experience. And then I encourage everyone to write your questions on the chat because at the end of the three presentations, uh, 10 minutes each, we're going to have extra 10 minutes for Q&A. So you can ask your questions, directing them to the startup, to the educational mentor, to the teacher or to the three of them. So thank you very much once more. And Mark, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, uh, Tanya. Yeah, so the, the most asked question uh, in the last year, you can see my screen right now, I guess. Yes, we can, yeah. perfectly yeah. fine. Yes. All right, All right. thanks. So uh, yeah, I'm Mark, um, I'm, I'm, I'm presenting this webinar. I'm a, I'm a colleague of uh, Eric and uh, Anna Lucia. Uh, they have been involved in the Impact Ethic program um, a bit more than, than me, myself, actually. And um, they're also present here today, so thanks for that. Um, so. Um, we are Bolster Academy. Uh, we're into maths and related subjects, actually. And uh, I will tell you uh, in this presentation a bit, uh, well, where we all started, uh, what the idea was, what the problem is, where we're solving, and actually also showing the tool a bit, uh, but more importantly, uh, ending with, well, why did we decide to, to join the Impact AdTech uh, program and why was it a, a good choice to, to join? Um, so this is the the maths problem we we call it. Um, maths is a very important subject in uh, in school. It's uh, most cases a compulsory subject, uh, or either uh, it is a, a prerequisite for for getting into the the study of your of your choice after high school. Um, but it is a is a difficult subject for 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 a lot of students. It really is a is a stumbling a stumbling block for for them. And yeah, in an ideal world, you would have um, <laughs> one in one classroom and all the students get the one on one support that they need yeah? because they all struggle with with different subjects. They have different levels uh, and uh, but yeah, there is no ideal world. We all know that um, uh, teachers, they simply don't have time to, um, to 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 give attention to all the students uh, that that require. So the classes are, are, are big, are, are getting bigger even. So this really is an issue. And on top of that, uh, COVID-19 happened. And then, um, well, this this personalized one-on-one -on -one support became even harder to give uh, because a lot of students were, were working from, from home. So a few things about, about us. So we're a spin-off um, from uh, Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands. Uh, we created um, uh, an e-learning platform, a personalized e-learning platform, uh, which is which is based on on, on mastery based learning um, and um, up till recently we've mostly been working with um, uh, higher ed so with colleges universities uh, polytechnics um, and also with educational uh, publishers uh, but for the most part with uh, with the higher ed institution so we we started in the netherlands uh, we're um, we're a domain uh, domain leader there uh, but we're active in, in in quite a few other countries as well, and Australia is, is actually our our second uh, second biggest uh, biggest market. Um, so the R tool, um, there there are two two main end users of course here, uh, and 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 for the students, the thing is to to really keep them engaged. And the tool is is based on a, on a few certain principles, uh, of which the main one being that it's that it's very personalized, very targeted. Uh, and another uh, important thing is that it's that is developed around the, the mastery based learning uh, approach um, for the teachers. Um, yeah, it's very flexible. It's a very modular tool, eh? although it's turnkey. Uh, it is it is also customizable eh? to make sure that, that you still are in, 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 in full ownership of the learning process. Um, it can be fully online. Um, it can also be used in the in, in classroom uh, by means of a smart smart board or a beamer, or it can be any any hybrid or, or flipped classroom setting in that in between. Um, but the main thing here is that either way you, you implement it, 
uh, it takes care of a lot of the, the repetitive tasks uh, uh, that you have to do as a teacher. You don't have to do the, the homework grading or assessment grading anymore. It saves you time. And yeah, one teacher, uh, well, previously already, he, he said it very fitting. He said that with a, with a tool like this, uh, we can focus more on the creative part of teaching again. And that's, of course, um, a really great to, great to hear. So now I will show a few um, screenshot moving images of uh, of the tool so you can get um get a bit of a feel for it so it really is like a digital textbook so it has uh theory pages but then better of course because it, it can be interactive it can it can it can move um you can have like multiple layers of of, of knowledge between it so if you want to know more you can ask more so that like, the eager student can uh, can can dive down a, a bit deeper so Everything in the system, all the exercises, uh, also the examples actually are randomized. Yeah? So you can, as a student, you can revisit an, uh, an exercise, a subject again, and you get different parameters and you can still answer the, the question and you're still learning the same mathematical skill. And yeah, this is a bit of the, yeah, this really is like the, the secret sauce that we have. So the, the, the tool, gives very targeted feedback on a student answer attempt. You know, you're not getting like an answer right or wrong, try again. No, you're getting targeted feedback, really showing what you did wrong at, at which stage in the, in, the, in the solving process. And in that sense, it's a bit like that the system not only sees that you make a mistake, but also what that mistake is and, and, and takes you by the hand and, and guides you towards the, the final answer. Just what a teacher would do if he was looking over your shoulder uh, and, and trying to help you out. It also has an extensive built-in testing module for diagnostic, formative, or even summative uh, testing. Uh, and of course, there are very rich uh, learning analytics um, in place, and, and this will help uh, teachers to identify red flags. Uh, so you can use the, uh, the time that you have uh, with your class and, and students, you can, you can use that more uh, effectively. Um, so this timeline uh, shows um, also where we're active, but also why we joined Impact EdTech. Uh, we as a company were already covering uh, the university level. Um, after that, we, we moved along the educational spectrum uh, towards college. Uh, and now the, the move to, to secondary ed made a lot of sense. Um, we, we were actually getting a pre-Impact EdTech program, getting a lot of inbound uh, high school requests uh, during COVID already. So that also made us realize there was a sense of urgency for a tool like this. Yeah, and we, we saw the Impact EdTech call, uh, open call as a, as a way for test out um, if we could also help out on a secondary uh, level, secondary education level, sorry. So um, this was also nice to, to share, we think. So we had a few expectations uh, from the piloting program as well. Um, well, one was to, to get feedback uh, from the end user uh, to see if our mathematical content was indeed suitable for a secondary education level, eh, because we, we started off more in, the, in, the, in the, more from the, the higher ed, ed sphere. Um, we also wanted to get feedback from the high school teachers uh, we work with, uh, with regarding to like the general workflows and the functionalities of the tool, uh, because the tool as it is right now, has been mainly been designed as well as improved upon uh, based on the feedback we have received from um, from 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 higher ed. Um, and we, of course, also wanted to get feedback from the the students, eh, the high school students we we've been working with uh, regarding the the general usability of the of the tool, if the U, UI UX uh, made sense uh, for them as um, as well. So uh, these are. Um, our uh, main uh, conclusions that we had from them from them from the impact attack program um well the good thing is that uh, yeah the, the content gap as we uh, feared uh, was not as big as it actually uh, we thought it would be eh, especially because of the the overlap of course that there is between like upper secondary and and, and first year college bachelor uh, education and yeah, it was really great to see that the, the tool proved to be uh, valuable. Eh? All, all piloting teachers reported that the tool helped them uh, save time uh, when it came to their teaching. 
Um, and yeah, the majority of the, um, the piloting students also enjoyed interacting uh, with the tool and learning from it and hence being, being engaged. The, the program uh, helped us realize that localization uh, is, is, is more important in secondary education uh, than it is in, in, in higher ed. Uh, so that, that definitely is um, a, a challenge. Um, but so moving forward, uh, depending on the countries uh, we aim to focus on, um, we will be translating uh, our content and also like localization in a different manner, like adjusting notations, um, uh, mathematical notations, if that's needed. So, and yeah, when it comes to the, to the pilots, since all teachers are happy uh, with the tool, uh, we are letting them. Uh, we'll keep letting them use it uh, till the end of the till the end of the school year, um, and also with the help of the the EUN uh, dissemination uh, and the message we we could get out there, uh, we were also um, successfully connected to to other teachers uh, in the UK, Estonia, Greece, Norway, and 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 even Mexico. So that's already outside of the the EU. Uh, and uh, these, these teachers uh, are also interested in, in, in doing pilots, and we're gonna we're gonna start them uh, start start them soon. So yeah, that was my um, my um, my my short story. Uh, I cannot see right now if there are any questions, but um, I'll figure that out. <laughs> Don't the... worry, we will figure it out at the end of, at the end of the presentation. Yeah, uh, I will just give the floor to Rafa now and we will go back to all the questions that we have in the chat at the end. I'm, I'm taking notes. Don't worry about yeah. it, Mark. We're not going to miss anyone. But well, that's interesting what you said about localization, right? Because like, uh, well, as we know, math systems differ from country to country. So that's a good feedback right there about localizing how the feedback is given to students. So so that's one thing that I found really interesting about the presentation. So the best of luck now yeah. that you are also entering in the high school territory or that you're already there. So, I mean, after the impact of tech, I'm sure the product is going to go even beyond Mexico. So best <laughs> of luck to Bolster Academy. And now I give the floor. Uh, it's my pleasure to give the floor to Rafael Montero that is going to present the part uh, uh, and the point of view of the educational mentor during this piloting uh, phase. So the Rafa, the floor is yours and feel free to share your presentation with us. And again, you also have 10 minutes. OK, thank you very much, Tanya. Uh, so I'll begin sharing my screen. OK, so I think that now you're watching my screen. Is that correct? Um, it's still loading, so I don't see anything right now. OK. And I, I think your connection, maybe it's not super steady. So if you want to turn off your camera, maybe okay. that helps a bit. Yes, now sure. I can see your screen, for example. Yeah. OK, so I'll turn off my camera and. OK. Thank you very much, Rafa. You're welcome. OK, so now are you seeing my presentation? Yes, we do. Setting up okay. the pilot. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tania and Mark. Uh, so I will begin by presenting myself. So I am uh, Rafa, so I, I'm an upper secondary school STEM teacher in Colegio Corazón de María, which is a school in, in the north of Spain, in Asturias, where I am also, besides being the math teacher, I am also the European Police Coordination Coordinator. So I'm very much into European things, such as tuning, scientists, and also Europeana. Um, here now you are seeing the roadmap of the pilot. Okay, so there are there were three milestones, which was first of all the meeting with Bolsters. That's when I met uh, Eric and Ana Lucia, which were the two people from Bolster with uh, whom I was working most during the pilot. Then we have what is the pilot kickoff, which is the moment where the pilot Sorry. teachers. Sorry, yes. Rafa, to interrupt you. I think maybe there's a problem with your slides because we're supposed to see a timeline, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Exactly. And we were still seeing your picture. Thank you very much. Now we can. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, so you are seeing now the, the what is the, the roadmap of the pilot. And um, yeah. In the roadmap, you see that I was saying that there were these three milestones. Okay, so uh, first of all, um, 
after the pilot kickoff, the pilot teachers began working with the solution, with the Bolster Academy, and we did several meetings with them in order to do some follow-up. Okay, there were like one common meeting and two meetings per pilot teacher. Uh, the last part of the pilot process was gathering the results, and um, that is when, uh, when most of the pilot teachers did the final evaluation and uh, they uh, collected the feedback from, from their students to send it to, um, to EU and to Walter Academy. And now we are in the end of the pilot, which is the meeting we are having now. Um, I've changed now the slides, so hopefully you are now seeing the educational KPIs and educational deliverables, uh, which are the main things that as educational mentor, I, uh, in collaboration with Walter Academy, develop over the course of the, of the pilot. Uh, the first educational KPI was uh, to map the curricula of three upper secondary uh, uh, countries uh, who were uh, the Netherlands, UK and France. And we also um, envisioned the possibility of also mapping the curricula from Spain. Uh, the second educational KPI was to have a uh, over 70% content match between the Bolster platform and the curricula of those three countries by the end of the program. Additional to these KPIs, which are uh, a number, uh, we also had deliverables, which are reports uh, Bolster gave to at the end of the pilot to EUN. So the first deliverable was the curricula matching, in which uh, they had uh, what was in the Bolster uh, platform matched to the curricula of the three countries. And this was a very important deliverable, which allowed for easier recognition, recognition of uh, what was asked uh, in the math uh, curricula of a country. So if a teacher wanted to teach functions, then uh, easily you could see uh, the functions where they were in the Bolster Academy app. Okay? And the second deliverable was a project plan on how to get to a 100% match uh, with these uh, three selected countries' curricula. We also uh, envision, if we were very successful, to have like a, a additionally develop a fourth uh, curriculum with Spain, as was stated before. So now changing the slides, uh, we see here two screenshots of the educational KPIs. So we have uh, the mapping of the curricula available in Bolster Academy and how we finally got to the content match with the other curricula of the countries, the Netherlands, with UK and with France. As you can see, the objective was to have uh, over 70%, but uh, we went uh, above that limit. Uh, in Netherlands, we uh, had a 93% content match. And in UK and France, we also did fairly well over the 70%. So it was a 73 in the UK and a 72% in the, in the France curricula. And uh, here is a very uh, a screenshot of the educational of, of the educational deliverables that were this curriculum matching report and this project plan to get a hundred percent content match. Uh, the idea was uh, how they develop a roadmap in a year to develop the content that is needed to get this hundred percent content match. So now that is ready made in order for Bolster to. Uh, customize their um, solution to the curricula of these three countries. Um, once we have the educational deliverables and the educational KPIs uh, set in place and connected, uh, those uh, were, let's say, the basement to begin with the piloting process. Um, now we have the um, curricula in Bolster is already uh, analyzed and now we could incorporate the pilot teachers. So uh, the pilot kickoff, as you could see in the roadmap, began uh, at the end of January and over two months the three selected pilot teachers could implement the Bolster solution at their school. The selected pilot teachers were from France, from Italy and from Spain. 
Okay. And finally, uh, we had the pilot ended by the end of March, so in April this was where the, the results were gathered. Uh, we have now a, a picture where you can see the, the people involved in the in the platform, so in testing on the pilot. So here you have Eric from Bolster and Ana Lucia, also from Bolster. Uh, the pilot teachers who are uh, Chiara, Chiara Maugheri uh, from Italy. She's a, a grade 12 math teacher. You have Noe Carrero from Spain, a grade 11 math teacher, and Sophie Bauer from France, a grade 10 math teacher. Uh, the three teachers uh, had their uh, classes in different uh, mixtures of blended learning, full online lessons, or face-to-face -face lessons. So it was a very good pilot in the sense that all these three uh, options were explored. Uh, to begin the pilot, the first part was developing a lesson plan in which the teachers uh, selected the contents they wanted to, to impart to their students and how they were going to develop the two months, more or less, a week more or a week less, that, and that was the duration of the um, pilot process. At the end of the, uh, at the end, once the lesson plan was developed, uh, we also set up uh, several meetings with the teachers in order to do some follow-up. Uh, the first meeting was right after the pilot kickoff. Uh, it was just to collect the lesson plans and to solve any technicalities that may have arisen. The second meeting uh, was uh, in order to set up the pilot activities in a clear timeline, and the third meeting uh, was just to do some follow-up and give suggestions on the dissemination of the pilot. Dissemination was very important, and it was very encouraged, encouraging the pilot teachers uh, as they were testing uh, this uh, platform in the framework of a uh, European uh, initiative. So here you have two uh, tweets from one of the Spanish teachers. And finally, uh, the pilot teachers uh, gave their feedback, which was uh, very positive. And also, uh, they gave, especially uh, Chiara, which is the pilot teacher who is going to present right after myself. She also uh, gathered several uh, feedback from the students in an Excel file that was also sent to Bolster. Um, this is all that I have to share with you. So with that in mind, I leave the floor now to uh, Chiara. Thank you very much, Rafa, for your presentation just on time, 10 minutes. That's uh, that's great. So now uh, that we saw the, the educational mentor results and point of view of the piloting teacher and uh, uh, educational mentor, I'm just going to give the floor to the piloting teacher representative, Chiara. I'm happy that you're here with us. So the floor is yours if you have to present or share a presentation, like uh, uh, feel free okay. to do so. Yes, I think I'm sharing my screen. Can I? Yes. Ask? Okay. We so can. can we you can. see it on screen? Yeah, we can. The pilot well, experience in Italy. I put my camera on, so if there are any issues with that, please let me know. Okay, perfect. That's okay. great. Okay, I will start. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. I'm Chiara Mogeni, an Italian teacher, and today I will tell you something about my experience as a pilot teacher here in Italy for Boston Academy. Let's start by presenting ourselves. Who are we? Uh, we are a scientific high school in Saronno, which is a town near from Milano, very famous for its liquor. So maybe you all know my city. And I am actually a, both a math and physics teacher, and I have 24 senior students. As you can see from the graph, the relation with math is not good uh, as I wish, but <laughs> it's life. So before starting telling you something about Bolster, I would like to share with you our COVID-19 story because it's very important to understand the, the project. So in Italy, the situation was pretty difficult uh, since February 2020. We had the complete lockdown since May 2020, and we had to face a lot of issues, both technological issues and issues with uh, be strict to our program. Then, after a normal summer, we went back to school in September, but only half of the students were allowed to stay at school. The other part of the class has to follow their lesson uh, at home. 
So it was a pretty difficult situation. Then we had another complete lockdown. And in March, we were allowed to return to school. But the situation now is really puzzling because uh, uh, schools are open or closed based on the number of field people and of people in intensive care units. So for my student, uh, it has a lot of uh, repercussion, both uh, uh, emo uh, emotionally and on the learning outcomes. Uh, before starting the project, I asked uh, my student about their feeling towards remote schooling and toward math. As you can see from the graph, a lot of my students has, have difficulties with their motivation to keep their motivation high with remote schooling. And specifically with math, they struggled a lot with exercises and with algebraic, with performing algebraic calculus. I think that both is super useful to exercise algebraic part, as we will see. Then uh, I asked to my student which kind of technology could help us uh, in uh, overcoming our difficulties with remote schooling. I have uh, three super, super nice students which uh, agreed to be part of this presentation and represent uh, uh, the feeling of the world class. So as you can see from the slide, my students were looking for a technology that could help them to be more independent in performing their exercises. Another part of students wanted a technology that could help them understanding theory better because they struggled, struggled a lot to ask questions to the teacher in remote schooling. And then I have some students that uh, were struggling with their motivation, so they would like to try something new that can uh, have them uh, feeling more involved. Then I ask myself which kind of technology could help me as a teacher. As you probably know, with remote schooling, we are uh, we have a lot of work to do, uh, and it was very difficult at the beginning to adapt ourselves to do this new kind of school. And so I was uh, really looking for something that could help me saving my time while monitoring and involving my students. Therefore, I decided to apply for this project. I'm super grateful to, to be selected, to, to have been selected by Bolster. And, uh, and we start with this project. I, uh, I can say that this project was structured into three big moments for me. The first moment was uh, an exploration of the platform, uh, of course, with the help of Eric and Anna from Bolster, which were super, super, super kind to me. I think that the sentence that I heard the most from Eric was, uh, please let me know if you have any questions. And then I had to prepare a lesson plan. And for me, this part was really a nightmare. It was super, super difficult. I had this nightmare of Rafa asking me if I did my lesson plan, but it was super useful. So I'm really thankful to Rafa, which was my mentor. And then I had to start to try bolster with my students. And I think that the most difficult part was to be flexible and to adapt my ideas to their real needs. Uh, in fact, it was meant at the beginning to use Bolster to introduce integrals. But uh, when I saw the learning outcomes of derivatives, I decided to use Bolster to revise derivatives with them. As you can see from the graph, the results weren't satisfied at all. Uh, so, uh, what did we do? First of all, we explored the software together, as you can see from the picture, and this part was really easy because the platform is user friendly and we didn't have any issues at all, except from two students that forgot immediately their password, but it's life as, as we teacher know. And there I had to prepare a specific assignment for my students. I decided to divide them into three groups based on their performances in derivatives. And then I could use the platform to adapt the exercises to their needs. And with the platform, uh, it's super easy to monitor student progresses, and uh, they can also use the forum, the specific forum, uh, for asking questions to the teacher. After that, I decided to make two self-evaluation tests to make students more aware uh, about their learning progresses. Uh, normally, I didn't perform uh, uh, 
so, uh, so many self-evaluation tests be because even if they are super useful, it's uh, a big, it requires a big amount of time, but it, with Bolster it was super, super easy because uh, the platform corrects uh, the test itself and it gives you, as you can see from the picture, an immediate feedback and a report with all the results. And then uh, we had the final test. My students weren't happy at all. And as you can see from this slide, uh, the results were pretty satisfying. In fact, we have uh, the, uh, an, a decrease of the number of low performing students while an increasing of students that had uh, medium and high performances. On x axis, by the way, there is the number of tests, the first one, the second and the third are the self-evaluation test, and the fourth uh, is the final one. While on the uh, y axis, uh, y axis, we have the percentage of students that are performing in this way. So the learning outcomes are really great. Uh, at the end of the project, I decided to collect uh, my students' opinion. Uh, we, as you can see from the picture, uh, my students were really, really happy. They loved uh, specifically the idea of having a platform with uh, simple theory pages, which, can, which could help them in understanding better theory. They love the idea of having a platform which gave them immediate feedback on their exercises and they really enjoy the idea of having a new way of learning. So a new technology and a new way for, uh, of learning. I was super satisfied uh, also and I think that uh, I'm done. I was faster than life actually. Uh, so I have enough time to say a special thanks to my team uh, especially Anna and Eric from Bolster. I know that Anna, you didn't have a specific picture, but I have one here, uh, we, which were super, super kind. Uh, special thanks to Rafa, my mentor, and to my colleague Sophia Noir. Uh, a super uh, and a special thanks to Impacted Tech, uh, which uh, made all this experience possible. And of course, a big thank you to my school, represented by Professoressa Maria Piera Girola and the staff, Professor Clerici and Professoressa Iannone, which always support me. And the biggest thanks to my students, which were amazing in this project. I think I'm done, so thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chiara. That that was a really vivid and really insightful presentation. I can I could see the motivation faces of of the students and also of Rafa. So that was really nice, and I really like the the slide about the hate love relationship of the students with maths. That I I guess is like what we like what we all suffered or what we all experienced when we were back in school. I remember perfectly saying like, okay, I don't know if I really like maths or I'm done with them. So that was uh, that was really well explained, and I'm really happy that in the end, uh, after this long journey of like love hate yes no, in the end you had like the learning outcomes that you were expecting and that they were really positive. So the best of luck with uh, using Bolster Academy for the rest of the year with your right. students. And uh, well, I'm just gonna like now we have like five, six minutes for a Q&A and I'm gonna ask Rafa and Mark to turn on, on their cameras because Chiara, I see that you already have it on. So we can create a bit of a, a cozy environment because I'm gonna ask uh, some of you questions that could be answered by all of you or just uh, maybe targeted to the educational mentor or to the teacher. So the first uh, question that we picked up from the chat before is uh, uh, it was a question uh, directed to Mark. And uh, it's a question uh, asked by Anita, and uh, she's asking for from what age group would you recommend the tool to be used? Lower secondary, upper secondary? What would you be? What would it be your recommendation? All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the question, um, Anita. Um, we um, ourselves, our content that we have ready. Uh, I would not right now advise you to start with uh, age uh, 12 uh, right away uh, because we, we don't have that, that content on the shelf. However, we do have some, some, some subjects on like numbers and algebra. So I would say that we're not very far off, um, but um, right now I would indeed go for upper secondary as the, the safe bet. One thing that I do have to, to tell is that this is about the content, the technology as such, 
can be used already earlier on in the K-12 uh, sphere because the, the educational publishers we work with, there we are a technology supplier, they already start in primary education. So really like arithmetic because the, the principle of giving an answer, an open-ended type of answer and getting targeted feedback on that, that remains the same as well as the mastery-based learning. But we right now uh, can, can definitely help uh, teachers out with uh, upper secondary. I hope this answers the question. I, I do think so. And I, as I, I can see that uh, Anita is saying like, thank you for your answer. I teach grades five to eight, so 10 to 14 years old in Croatia. So thank you very much for for your answer, Mark. And now is a question for the educational mentor for Rafa. So as an educational mentor in the Impact Tech, Tech program, what would it be or what would you bring home as a lesson learned from all these months working uh, as a bridge between the startup and the teachers? Well, first of all, the, the enthusiasm, let's say it was a very new thing um, from the pilot teachers and also from Bolster Academy, it was a very good team. I mean, I'm going to miss having those uh, meetings with, you know, all the bunch, let's say, you know, it was a uh, very easy going. Everybody was highly proactive with working. So for me, it was a pleasure working with Sophie, working with Noe, working with Kiara and obviously with the people I'm at Bolster. So that's my main takeaway. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think the enthusiasm and the motivation is the best takeaway that you could that you could get. No, it's the best uh, feedback that you could give uh, to the startup in the, in the sense that like their product gives you motivation to keep learning and to keep improving education. So I guess that's that's the best takeaway. And I can see also Sophie here, and I'm sure uh, Noah is here. So thank you very much for for being here, even though Chiara is representing you today. So just a quick question to the piloting teachers, and feel free, to, Chiara, if you want to answer or Sophie, I mean, like the floor is yours. Uh, and the question would be like, do you think that before and after using Bolster Academy, there, there was a, actually a before and after in your class? Uh, is it like, did, did it change the way you're teaching and, and it's going to impact the way you're going to teach the future generations? Oh, great. Noe is there. So like the three of you can answer this question now. Feel free. You should have the possibility to unmute uh, Sophie yeah, and Noe. You, feel, you can feel free. unmute yourself. Uh, Chiara, Noe, someone wants to answer, please? Yeah, I, I want to answer, but I didn't want to, to be <laughs> excessive in this way. But, uh, yeah, I definitely think that this project was a big milestone for me. Uh, first of all, because uh, it makes me more aware about uh, the possibility that Europe gives to us as teacher, which is really amazing. And I didn't know that there was such a big, big world out there. So this is the first outcome. And then uh, I think that uh, I learn and also my students learn that we can uh, make school using different uh, sources here and there, different ideas. And we have uh, to be super flexible to understand which kind of technology of, learn of way of learning can help uh, us better in that specific moment with the difficulties we are living. So, yeah, I appreciate this idea, this flexibility that I gained. And then the, especially the difficulties Italy was suffering since the beginning, right? Yeah. That the, I mean, the school's closure hit you first. And yeah. uh, I guess you were actually the piloting country in yeah. all this uh, COVID yeah. madness. Crazy and we weren't prepared at all. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, but that's why I mean, like, uh, that's one of the things we always talk about in the Impact Tech Tech program. That thanks to these startups that, like, now had like the chance to really show us what the products can do. And it was like, unfortunately, we had to go through this situation to discover that actually the the link between education and 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 technology is stronger than we have expected. Yeah. So thank you very much to all of you for your great work in the Impact Tech, Tech program, to the startup, to Mark, to Eric, to the whole team, to Rafa's educational mentor and to the teachers. Uh, I mean, and it's a pity indeed, Sophie, that at the end of the pilot, the schools were already closed in France, but I hope you have the opportunity to try them 
in the to try Bolster Academy farther in the near future. And we could see the baby of Noé over there. So that's why he was not replying because he was trying to sleep the baby. So, I mean, I wish you the best of luck in the future to the startup now that we're ending uh, finding getting to the final stage of the program, but I'm sure you're going to have a lot of success, as you said, Mark, beyond Mexico uh, after all this, uh, all these months. So thank you very much to everyone for attending today. Thank you for the thank you to the participants and to the team that was behind today's webinar. And I wish you a lovely afternoon and see you maybe in another webinar of the public series. Don't forget that we have um, like I think six more to go or eight more to go. So we will be around today and tomorrow. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for organizing, Tanya Roman. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Bye bye. See you soon. Thank you.